What's going on guys and girls, it's the short bear and today as promised we're going to talk about WKHS. WKHS is a name that I traded in the past, um, in May, the first time it ran, uh, and on the second day, but after that I kind of left it alone as I saw it grind back and a few days ago, a week ago approximately, um, I started playing it again once I saw it at 5 and I saw some uh, PRs coming out. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about um, today, exactly how I approached it, um, everything going over the fundamentals, the technicals, the news and the volume analysis and uh, how that all came together to create my thesis and uh, how, how I traded it basically from there on. Um, Workhouse uh, Horse, I mean, is a company that creates um, and builds trucks, all right, electrical trucks, and um, back in, let's see, back in May, Donald Trump um, posted about it. So normally WKHS wouldn't be running like this, all right, you don't see those kind of charts that are down trending the whole time, and then pop up and just trend up a, a lot of time. So it's, it's pretty rare to see something like that. Um, and that's why I was so interested in it. So what he posted back then, um, remember back then I didn't know anything about workhorse or, G or, or GM, I did, but basically the, the new ticker was WKHS and I didn't know anything about it. So the first thing I read was great news for Ohio, um, he just spoke to Maria Berra, the CEO of General Motors. Um, she informed him about the subject, about um, the other company and so on. And, um, he said this, so General Motors will be selling their beautiful Lord Stone, uh, Lodge Stone plant to workhouse. Their plan is to build electric trucks and GM will also be spending blah 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 in Ohio. Right? So um, the real news was basically right here. So um, GM has a plant, the Lordstown plant, uh, and the problem with that plant is that they sold it or have the plan to sell it because they went into bankruptcy in 2009 and don't want to do the same mistake. So that tells you a bit about the, the whole plan, right? It's just really big. Um, and, and now the, the next question is GM, why do they want to sell? And this new company that nobody heard about in the past, what can they do? Do they have even the cash to be thinking about buying it? Or do they have basically nothing, all right? Um, such such a plan is, is, is a big investment. It's not little money. So uh, if you don't have any money and you're struggling already, why the hell would you be um, buying a plant like this? Uh, so this was the news, all right? This is... Everything that that pushed it since the beginning until the end. Um, I mean, the news is is not. It, it's pretty big, all right. The news is pretty big. It's a big plan. It would be something pretty big for the company for a Workhouse that is a small company for now. Um, and um, and and yeah, it would be a pretty big deal, but nothing to send it up that high, all right. Nothing, nothing like that. So. The real catalyst is that Donald Trump talked about it. That that's the real thing. So now that we that we saw the tweet, I'm gonna so, uh, show you a few examples, a few um, news articles that I read back then, uh, which I also highlighted for the the biggest uh, the biggest things that I want to go over. Um, so this is the chart, all right, of Workhouse uh, Horse. I mean sorry, um, after the tweet, so it really started ramping up into the close um, and uh, and continued from there on after um, a few days of, um, of consolidation, as you can see here. So the, the shares, so it, it started trending up. Um, remember, this comes from 80 cents and it ended up at 260, so a 240% move 
uh, which is, is is really really big. So um, the volume, the average volume was three hundred and forty five thousand shares over the the month prior to the um, to the tweet, and by the bell it traded over forty five million. All right, so that tells you something. It's trading over one hundred. Uh, 100 times its average uh, volume, uh, which tells you the exposure that, that this company got um, all of a sudden. So Workhorse uh, is one of uh, four companies that the U.S. Postal Service wants to hire to build the trucks. Uh, but as of now, it's not the, the, the main... Um, the main um, the main builder of, uh, of that new truck or of the trucks that they want. And they are just part of four companies that might get the contract. So nothing particular about that because I heard a lot about yeah they built or they will build the, 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 the trucks and so on. Nothing in, is, is set in stone as of now. So GM is trying to sell a closed factory to trouble EV startup workhouse. So what, what do we talk about here? So first of all, they kind of uh, recap everything. So who wants to sell what to whom and um, who um, tweeted about it. So Trump and, and, and so on and so on. So first of all, that, that's what I also saw in the filings. And uh, while researching, the deal is, is not done. All right. So Trump kind of said, yeah, they will be selling to blah, blah, blah. All right. That's, that's the third thing. Thing that we could uh, could be, and um, and that's not true at all, right? There is there was no deal whatsoever, so that's the first thing, first red flag, um, and and right here, so GM did eventually announce Wednesday that it's in in discussions, right, of selling the factory, but that's it. That but but the sale, um, as you can see here. The sale would be to, um, but the sale would be to uh, Workhouse a Horse, and uh, an affiliate or an entity, and so on. So it, it's just in discussions. Nothing is set in stone. The factory measures uh, six million square feet, uh, and and sits on nine hundred um, acres. And let me tell you, that is really big, especially for Workhorse. I'm going to show you the financials just after, and you're going to get the idea of why they can't afford this. So it, it's a huge plan, right? Um, and Workhorse a horse, uh, doesn't or didn't, didn't build a lot of trucks. So um, the, the, the question is, why would they want to do that? Um, is everything built upon... Um, the idea that they will get the deal from the postal service, uh, it's, it's just a lot of speculation about the whole thing. So, um, one reason for the holdup, for the wholesale and so on, is the financial problems, as they see right here. Um, you're going to see right here. So, the, the company has never been profitable, ever. That's the first, the, the second red flag. It reported a 36.5 million loss last year, and the annual sales dropped from 10 million in 2017 to just 763,000 across 2018, and it had only 1.5 million cash at the end of the year. Now, a plant like this costs a lot, all right? Just a, a, a really big amount. So. There, there's the question, how can they afford this or how, how could they, all right? And the, 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 the simple answer for me is they can't. They can't until they prove it otherwise. Um, now, the next thing that they de uh, did to, to stop the bleeding is make a deal with the devil, basically. So um, there's a hedge fund that um, that is named um, Marathon Asset Management. And what they do is for distressed company... They, they make basically a really, in my opinion, a really bad deal, all right? And, and the companies have a hard time to pay everything back and so on, but it's basically the last thing that they can do uh, before going to in bankruptcy, basically. So they, they, they have basically nothing they can do. So that's what they did, all right? And the Marathon um, uh, investment was basically $35 million in financing um, that, that Workhouse is using for all of his assets, right? Um, 
So the plant that they want to, be, to, to, to buy, or at least how he says it, how Trump says it, is, um, is used by GM to make the, the Chevy Cruze, and it has 4,500 employees. Now remember how much money they have, all right? 1.5 million in cash at the end of the year of 2018, and they only have basically up to 35 million in financing, but they owe a lot already. Um, so so the, the, the question is, how, how would they buy such a huge plan, employ 4,500 4, employees, or let's say they, they let them all go, all right? They still have to pay new employees, and so on and so on. So it's it's a lot of speculation. They don't have any cash to buy everything uh, or anything. And um, yeah, the, the, there there are a lot of questions. So at, at this point, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of red flags. So they don't have any money. Um, the loss increases. Um, they don't have um, a lot of assets. Um, they have no cash on hand. They um, the the deal is is far from being done. Um, there are there are part of four companies that could get a, a a big deal. So there's there's just a lot that has been like misinterpreted and just just a, f a lot of fake news regarding that company, and 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 that created a lot of hype. Like this, all all of this, all right, is freely available on 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 multiple websites. But still, the the, the Trump tweet sent it up so much. So at, that, at this point, I'm, I'm just thinking, do they have any dilution? Because as a company, you have the responsibility to kind of, um, of raise the money and, and to use those, those volume um, days and, and uh, events to dilute and to, to get as much money as possible. Because one day, the, the whole mania, the whole hype will be gone. So as a company, it would be advisable to um to raise all right to get as much money as you can from that volume event um without basically letting it crash completely for the investors and so on so next um next thing um <laughs> which is pretty funny all right they um had um a conference call all right earnings that so we just talked about the start the middle, so um, news that came out after, and now we're talking about the conference call that happened uh, last week on Tuesday, so Tuesday the 6th of uh, August, and um, I was uh, listening to it, I was listening to it, they held the price a bit in the morning until the, um, the conference call, and this, uh, th these are the main things that they talked about, but there is one major thing that they didn't include in that news um, article that was mentioned in the, um, in the conference call during the, 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 the questions and uh, answers that gave a pretty accurate, uh, accurate um idea of what would happen um, at the end of the week, which happened yesterday. Yesterday, they put out an S3455 million. And I'm going to tell you exactly how I knew or how I had the, um, the conviction that they would do something like that. So what they told uh, us was, and now to our financial results for the second quarter, the sales for the quarter of 2019 for the second quarter was 6,000, all right? That's it, $6,000 for a company that wants to buy a plant where 4,500 employees work. Um, the plant is huge and they want to buy trucks, but the only thing they could manage was $6,000. $6,000, that's basically nothing, all right? For a company uh, with, a, with a market cap that big, with a float that big, it's really nothing. It's, it's laughable, all right? Um, it's down from 170,000 that was recorded in the second quarter of 2018. Now, remember what we just talked about, about the results right here? The company has never been profitable. It reported a, a loss last year and the sales dropped from two, from 10 million, all right? 10 million in 2017 to 763 across 2018 and to basically nothing in 2019. Um, 
the, the expenses in the second quarter decreased uh, 33 uh, percent to 2 million from uh, 3 million and, and the research expenses already right, decreased 36 percent to 1.2 million uh, from 1.9 million all right so um, <clears throat> what they did is they gave um, the, 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 the expenses decreased all right uh, because they just don't have the money to um, to spend it they don't have the money to spend it they don't build a lot of trucks Trump said that they build great trucks and a lot of trucks well we got the answer all right it's false so now we know first of all they didn't sell it so that was false they don't build a lot of trucks like he says um, they don't have the cash that he says they have um, they just don't have, they, they just can't buy it. It's just not possible, right? Um, so at this point, I'm thinking every single person out there that watches CNBC, that, that is a Trump fan, etc., etc., they will all buy and someday it will come crashing down. And that's where I want to attack it. So, um, I, I did my research. All right, I did my research. Those are fun, uh, fundamentals, and as you can see, it's pretty, pretty big. So WKHS has an OS of so outstanding shares of sixty-five million. They had cash of they had three million in cash at the end of March two thousand nineteen. And remember, they were in a deal with the Marathon uh, Asset uh, Hedge Fund, all right, to get up to thirty-five million. But they still only have three million in cash. Um, their cash burn is right around 400,000 per month. Uh, so as you can see, they don't uh, spend a lot. They have cash for eight months or something. Um, and as you can see, they just don't have any kind of money to pay employees. Um, they burn cash every single month. Um, so the dilution on WKHS, they had 7 million, uh, 7 million warrants at 125, they had 1.14 million at 121, they had 8 million at 125 and 2.6 million at 528. They also had an ATM, I believe it was 25 million at the start and 15 were left. Um, and they also have a loan with 10% interest uh, to Erosa, which is the biggest warrant holder. Erosa is kind of, um, is, is in a deal with the marathon, um, with the marathon um, agreement um, and the news, as I said, other bullshit, uh, no deal in play yet, just talk. They have zero dollars to buy the land um they maybe if they are part of the deal they would be uh in a partnership with another company so as you can see we have a ton of dilution um but still a lot of volume it's moving up and i'm just thinking at the point where everyone realizes that this company will not buy it that the trump news is gone and so on and so on and the price is at five dollars or at five dollars from 80 cents um, this will come crashing down because the warrant the warrants holder once they they um kind of notice right the company won't make it and we have still warrants and the price is at five dollars they will dump as much as possible before uh, the company completely implodes space. All right, so now to the trades. Now that I know that, I'm thinking to myself, I want to attack it, but I don't want to be too aggressive because still people believe in Trump and so on. And that's what, what matters, all right? We have seen stocks just continually ramp up um, and, and go further than everyone thought. So uh, at this point, I'm just searching for the best point of entry um to um to attack it um one sec so let me pull up the, um, the daily again all right so the daily at this point i'm just thinking where can i attack all right this one those days here i'm not attacking 
Um, we have a few reasons why I didn't attack. All right, the only volume day was this one basically, and and this day is kind of a bounce day. All right, maybe for a late day fade or something. But from from this point on, I'm looking for a few things. I'm looking for increased volume. Uh, I'm looking for a retest of resistance or a parabolic. Uh, as you can see right here, we didn't have any volume during that kind of grind period. Here we're getting overextended, but not really a parabolic move. We don't get those gap ups. It's, it's more like a steady grind. But right here, all right, we've got some increasing volume, more volume every single day. We're starting to gap up, all right, from this day to this day, from this day to this day, and from this day to that one. So at this point, we're really getting kind of overextended. We're getting further and further away from this support and this support and this support right here or here. And the volume is as big as basically this breakout day and um, nothing will kind of get over the volume on that big first day, but that's not what we're looking for. So at this point, at $5, I'm thinking this might actually be, be the day, all right? And as you can see, that's when I started shorting. So this was the day that we uh, we gapped up a lot. And just prior to that, we got a big, big selling candle pre-market. So at this point, I'm thinking either they are starting to unload, there are there, there will be some massive panic, or they are starting to kind of, they want the price down. So with uh, with as less volume and capital requirement as possible to get a better price to, to really accumulate some more shares. Um, so I, I tested it, I got a short in here and covered as I saw it move up. All right, no way I'm holding that. They are accumulating and moving it up. At this point, I'm looking for exhaustion and I'm looking for either volume or a, a failed breakout. Uh, nothing here, all right. We got over that area, uh, pullback, test, and really just threw in, um, retesting the level, holding, um, and same thing here, breakout, no rejection. But right here, we tried to break out, reject, um, bigger pullback on some more selling volume here. Um, and um, yeah, so we tried to bounce that candle, that green one right here, and uh, we failed. So at this at this point, we're making a lower high. Uh, so I'm I'm entering right here, thinking, all right, I'm gonna cut it over the highs, and I want a deeper pullback to the to the support area. So we've got this one, but as you can see, we failed it right away. So the next area of support and interest is gonna be this one. All right, so the, the, the previous resistance that turned into support, um, we tested it, panic under, got back up. So I'm thinking, all right, we're retesting this kind of level, um, holding it, and uh, we, we held it in the past, um, and, and, and I just want to cover. Uh, so I covered, and at this point, I'm looking for a reshort, so a bounce on the bigger time frames. This looks like one single drop. Lower volume on the bounce, as you can see, whoops, right here, uh, the volume decreased a bit. And then we get this selling candle right here, reject on bigger volume right here. So I'm thinking I want to re-enter, I re-enter, I saw some panic, and I'm thinking maybe we will retest that previous low um, that held before, and also basically that whole level right in here. Um, so I cover half right here, looking for support and so on, thinking, all right, I'm going to take this panic uh, as a signal to, to exit. Um, so I get out right here, we get the second wave down, and I cover everything. So at this point, I made everything back from the morning, uh, so the morning losses, and I'm up nicely on it. Not too much, not a home run, but just a basic hit. Um, at this point, I'm waiting for further consolidation and maybe a breakdown uh, towards the close. Um, but we didn't get that. So we get a steady grind, as you can see here. Retest kind of this uh, this um, area right there. Um, breakdown here in the afternoon, but not... So as you can see right here, we got this kind of um, support area break under it. But as you can see, like the volume here is nothing compared to the dumping volume in the morning. I'm thinking maybe they'll trap this uh, into the close, and that's what we saw, so I didn't attack it at all. 
Um, next chart, and uh, this is, I believe, the next the this day. So let's see on the chart. It's um, not this day. This day I completely missed. I just didn't <laughs> didn't watch it because I didn't get what I wanted the previous day. No panic into the close. Nothing. Uh, we got some major major seller um, selling in here. <laughs> And uh, I think I watched it on this day, thinking bounce day, and then roll over towards the close to close week and continuation. Um, but as you can see from the chart right here, we started, oops, we started moving, uh, not this one, this one, started moving from the close, um, moved up. I'm thinking, all right, maybe it's some shorts covering. They want to scare a bit of shorts. And um, that's why I did it. So I started shorting in here, started, uh, started um, taking some starters, getting stopped out, kind of trying to find my footing. And once we kind of rejected, as you can see, this area multiple times, I loaded up a bit more, uh, watched it completely reverse. And I, my idea was really kind of, this one is done, all right? I knew everything. So everything we, we just went through, the news, the fundamentals and so on, Everything just lined up. Um, so at this point, I'm looking to add. Um, I'm looking to add on every single bounce. So this one, this one, this one, and I got top ticked out. Uh, but as I, I, I waited, for, um, I thought we would see some really big panic. So um, I, I thought we would really kind of ramp up if if we did, and I didn't see any ramp up like I expected it to do. Um, so I re-entered everything. Uh, that I just covered, added more, stopped out, top tick again, but no panic, so I entered again, added again, and then um, into the close, had to cover it at $4. Remember, I was looking for the big trade here. I'm, I'm thinking this company is completely broken. This has no reason to be up at $4 from 80 cents on fake news and, and just bullshit. So um, that's why I covered it this way. And you might think, yeah, but just take covers and so on. My plan was a dollar lower. So um, that's why I didn't cover. And that's what we got the next day. So WKHS, um, we got some news hitting uh, pre-market here. We knew about um, the $6,000 revenue um, right there. And we had a conference call later on. Um, so that was really nice because um, the conference call holds the stock most of the time and you can really kind of start in once the conference call is um, is beginning. And once it's done, usually they crash down, all right? So um, there's nothing new, just a period. So um, at this point, um, let me show you the daily. We are on um, this day right here. So we get a big gap down from $4 to 350-ish. And at this point, I'm looking for the same plan again, scaling bigger size, uh, stop at basically break evenish. Um, so this one was um, in pretty big. All right, um, I was nervous right in here on this candle because it almost stopped me out. Uh, my stop was uh, right around 380, and uh, we got some pretty big and fast candles. So. Starting in pre-market on the bounce, I wanted a bigger bounce right towards 370 ish. Uh, but we were super heavy right here, and I, and we, we learned that like the revenue was like five percent of um, the last time we got news about it, so five percent of the previous revenues. Um, so I started in, we got a pop towards um, the open, um, added even more, and then the open came. We flushed down under the lows um, on bigger volume, as you can see right here, uh, which is pretty common. Or right? it's nothing, um, nothing huge or something, it's pretty normal to get the biggest volume at the open and then pop right away to get the weak shorts out uh, over the highs, basically taking the stops. Um, but we stalled right away. And like the second candle, don't really see it, this one, right? Look at the volume. Just pretty much no continuation, no follow through to the upside. And at this point I'm thinking either they rip it towards my stop or they dump it. So what I did is I lowered my stop. I added big here thinking, you know what? If this is the day, it's gonna crash right away. If it's not the day, I'm just gonna stop out and that's it. 
Um, so I added, worked out perfectly. They flushed it on bigger volume, which is really nice volume confirmation. And then on this bounce, I'm looking for lower volume, all right? I don't want the same volume and then reclaim. I want lower volume. So look at that volume, perfect. Uh, small buying volume, so I'm adding even more, thinking low of day flush coming. And then they kind of consolidate it right here. And then as you can see, something happened here. So what they did is they ripped it up over, whoops, uh, here, over the highs. So over those highs, over those highs, over those highs here to get the stops. All right, so the stops here. And then boom, big selling volume right away. All right, that's this candle, as you can see. Big selling volume flushing right away towards the lows. So at this point, I'm just super confident. All right, I'm thinking this one has just, all right, the, the, the entire company, the entire deal that was presented before is bullshit. The fundamentals say dilution like crazy. Uh, and we get this new piece of news, all right? We get the, the, the bad um, the, 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 the bad revenues. So at this point, I'm looking for a big seller on the tape and I'm seeing someone, all right? I'm seeing someone just there trying to kind of get it back up, at least at, in this range, all right? So a bit more up. But every time we try, once here, just smash back down, this one smash back down. So at this point, I'm thinking, you know what? If there's really a big seller, if really this one is done and the conference was nearing its um, its complete um, end, um, they are gonna start selling like crazy, all right? So I added big, big, all right? I doubled up right here thinking, if I'm wrong, I'm gonna stop out half here, all right, over those highs. So the big seller, I'm risking off the big seller and the rest just right here and my average was just basically here. So my average was here, I think, right around there, um, judging from my entries here. And um, this one is just a few cents. So I built a pretty big position and um, instantly flush. There I was up pretty big, all right. I covered, I think, a bit more than a half. And then next flush, cover down to one fourth. And uh, I'm looking for either just something just crazy to cover or I'm looking just to hold my core for the end of the day and add back to it. So that's what we got. Tried to add with a tight stop to get the biggest size as possible. Uh, didn't work out on this one. Covered some, uh, added it back here, added more and more. And my stop was going to be just over here. And as you can see to the right, I got stopped out uh, during the afternoon at $3.00. Just it's part of the game, all right. It didn't flush towards the end of the day, but as you can see, it got to 330. Uh, so I'm I'm really happy about to stop out on this one. So this is the whole story about WKHS. As you can see, it's 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 a uh, it's a lot that came together, and that's how I do it with my conviction trades. I need to know everything about it, uh, everything people are thinking about that stock, and then everything just comes together. The news. Uh, the fundamentals, the technicals, and the volume analysis. And um, yeah, once everything comes together, you make your plan. Uh, you try to get in with the best risk reward you can. So on this one, I had, I think, 20 to 1. Uh, and you just let it work, right? And the, the best lesson you can, you can learn from WKHS is, all right, it takes a few tries or uh, for some place. It takes a few tries. The important thing is not to use your whole capital at once and kind of be stubborn because you think something will happen right away. As you can see, I had to trade it two days prior to that where I made, on this day, I made a little bit of money. And on this day, I think I ended up maybe, uh, I think a little bit in the, in the red on this one. All right, so I ended up in red. Um, or at least like kind of break even for those two days uh, to nail the big trade. So be patient, trust your process, trust your training, your plan, your analysis, and hit it. All right, uh, if you have any questions, please ask in chat. Um, and I'm gonna bring out a new video really soon talking about another ticker. So I hope to see you soon and in chat, and I'll see you in the next one.